a pattern of behavior. I think that's the uh, the key thing to understand when we're talking about Diddy and the man who knows more about that than anything and has taught me a lot about it. Robin Drake, retired FBI special agent, chief of the counterintelligence behavioral analysis program. Here we go. 120 new allegations coming at the way of Diddy. 25 from accusers that were minors at the time of the alleged incidents. Uh, the rest adults. Uh, charges stemming from sex trafficking, forced labor, kidnapping, arson, bribery, obstruction of justice, assault, rape, you name it. Uh, if it's something bad that he could have done between 91 and now, uh, one of these 120 have a story about it. Um, yeah, 120 people. Let's talk about that and the pattern of behavior. Tony, I've never said it before on your show, but... I'm afraid we're going to have to say it now, and it's a sad thing that we are. I told you so. Oh, completely. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. You know, we said from the very get-go that there's going to be kids. Mm -hmm. And sadly, tragically, there are, and I think that number is going to continue to grow. The shocking thing to me, well, not shocking, it's the 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 ludicrous thing to me. That's a better word, ludicrous. Luda! Is that, <laughs> is that the defense attorney says he's going to be completely exonerated. <laughs> I know everything everyone everyone's lying that's always the entertaining thing to me when i mean i get you know their defense attorneys they're gonna do their job that's what they have to do they have to say oh we don't and that, all this is just the fact but at some point what point are you going home at night and going yeah i believe the shit i just said <laughs> it's not just a sinking ship this thing's on the bottom already yeah. and yeah. and they're just trying to figure out i mean can you imagine being a defense attorney saying all right um, I'm taking over the, the ship, not a sinking ship, a ship that's sunk uh -huh. while it's on the bottom and full of water. I'm going to try to plug these holes up and then figure out how I'm going to get the water out of the boat that's already on the bottom. This is a lot like the very bad late 70s, early 80s movie Raise the Titanic, but Diddy no, is the, the Titanic. No, the imagery in my head was exactly <laughs> the same, Tony. Uh, I can't believe you and I are, you know, we are on that kind of wavelength on that one. I was exactly thinking that exact movie. Um, I hate laughing and chuckling about this because this guy has destroyed lives. Oh my God. Um, and it's gonna it's gonna keep growing. There, you know, it's just gonna keep growing. It, it is. I mean, just the sheer volume of of what's coming in. What's blowing my mind is is logistically. How do you even address all of these cases? How yeah. do you how do you defend all these cases? How do you prosecute all of these cases? I mean, this is. I mean. It'll go on forever. I mean, there is no end in sight to any of this. I don't even understand logistically how you can do it. I mean, it's almost like a class action suit, but it's not. These are all individual cases. Yeah, it's you know that's again the imagery you are you and I are right on. I'm thinking, wow, this is like someone suing Verizon, and if you want to become part of the class action, you get fifty cents because there's so many people uh, that are involved in this one. I, I don't know how you do this. You know, I've done big investigations. I've been part of them. I've never been part of one this broad with this kind of scope. The, you know, and here's what's, ah, oh, it just really eats at me as an investigator is that this is one of the most important cases because of the, the, the lives that were destroyed, the restitution and the justice that must be done. But look at the resources this is going to take up in finances of the court system, in manpower of the court system, of the investigators. Because you have a finite number of investigators. You have a finite number of resources. For every one more investigator that's required to go do an interview, go do due diligence, go serve a, a subpoena, go serve a FISA if it's you know classified, all these things is one more person taken away from another case. Yeah. One more person taken away from a rape case, from a murder case, from some, some other case, all because this individual made a choice to take advantage of people. And in such a broad scale um it's such a massive scale uh for decades and, and you, you want justice for everybody you want everybody who's been affected by this individually to be able to now that they have him in custody to be able to to to, to share their point to, to talk about what happened to them and to get some form of justice whatever that is whether it's monetary whether it's just exposing him for this crime or that crime but at, at some point, it's just it's white noise because it's the same thing over and over and over. And at what point here, and we're just at the beginning, at some point, it's, it's going to be one of these where, okay, throw these charges at him. Um, obviously, he's already been charged, but there's probably going to be more. 
once he's locked up, once everything's drained, you, every, there's still going to be a lot of people with cases and a lot of stories, but at, at some point it's like there ain't nothing more you can do. You're not going to get justice, per se, other than he's already locked away, but because of the force of all of these people, he's never coming back. But that then kind of negates the individual trauma that he caused to so many people because there's just too much of it. You know, this is an interesting case to think about because I think there's such a volume of people, you know, many years ago, you know, Gavin DeBecker talks about it and uh, John Douglas talks about mm -hmm. the formation of the first groups that were victim assistance programs. Mm -hmm. And victim assistance programs are people that have survived trauma, they survived rape, they survived murder. Um, matter of fact, when they did the, when the Pittsburgh office of the FBI conducted the interview of President Trump after the assassination attempt, that was conducted as a victim assistance interview because he was a victim of a violent crime. And so that resources brought forward to him to offer counseling, to offer resources, to keep updates of cases. I really wonder in this case, because it's the volume is so high, if someone's not at least entertaining, creating a victim assistance program just for the Diddy victims. Because yeah. they're so numerous. Yeah, I mean, that's a serious thought. Uh, uh, because there are just so many. I mean, this th this case here against Diddy, it feels like we are in new territory. We are we are beyond R. Kelly. We're beyond Epstein. Uh, we're, like, this is like a whole new ball, I mean, uh, of, of wrong. And, and the amount of people involved, I think we're going to be shocked by once those names start to drop. But, I mean, ha can you think of any case like this where there's been this many accusers just coming out of the woodwork and a lot of them with very, very solid claims and the man literally has made music about his crimes for the last 30 years, rapping about what he's been doing? Yeah, no, I can't think of a case like it. And comparing it to, like, the Epstein case or any of the other noto notorious abusers of individuals and human beings... This one is different also because of the the enticement he was offering. It wasn't just money. It wasn't just, you know, that that party atmosphere. It was about influence. It was about power. It was about getting them in an area where he was really able to appeal to people's insecurities, um, people's desire for fame, fortune, notoriety. You know, those are massive human motivations for all of us as homo sapiens to varying degrees, depending on our own experiences, our own needs, wants, dreams, aspirations, priorities, traumas, mm -hmm. all these things. You know, I don't think there's ever been anyone with quite his ability to appeal to that lever of influence on people like him because he had all those things he could offer and he used it for his own gain with the assumption that it was going to be for theirs. <laughs> Hey, thanks for checking out the video. Be sure to follow us wherever you download podcasts, and especially Apple Podcasts, where you can get advanced episode and premium content on our premium channel right there. Also, be sure to follow us on social media so you don't miss any breaking updates on the stories that matter to you most. We're on TikTok, X, Instagram, Facebook. Just search Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi, and you'll find us right there. Again, thanks for watching.